So I'm kind of curious with, with, with maybe a question for your setup or, or your approach or, or your general performance stuff, but how do you handle or think about polyphony? And I don't mean specifically like more than one note, but as in more than one thing, be it like a process or a language or whatever, like how do you manage or think about that stuff like mid-performance or as part of building a thing or whatever? Um, yeah. Um... Well, so there are like two ways that I, or there are many ways that one can produce sound, but two ways that I like think about it in the middle of performance is that I can either be manually activating all the sounds. Like there's no sound until I push a button and then there is sound. Yeah. And then there's this other mode where I'm sort of surfing a sound, right? Where I can set something in motion and it will keep going even if I'm not touching anything and I'm sort of... Um, you know, but I can, I can sort of reach over there and change some things if I want to. And so often when I'm playing, I'm, I'm sort of doing both of those things. One is I'm actively doing some sound, actively activating that sound, and then also um, perhaps setting some things in motion that are happening in the background of us. I imagine it being a sort of background space that then we are inside of together playing. Yeah, because at some points like that, that was sort of like an apparent thing, and it's one of the things that, particularly if I'm playing in a purely acoustic context, which I am here, is something that is very difficult for me to manage. I mean, there's some I can do some objects in some circumstances where mm -hmm. I can do that, but for the most part, I only have sound when I'm doing sound. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of a couple moments where we got like written to that like sort of pitchy drony material, mm -hmm. where like there was sort of I had a sound going, and then you had a sound going, and then you had what sounded like there was like some sort of other. Mm -hmm. process still in a similar timbral world but like there was another thing going and it was kind of interesting it just sort of prompted me to think that oh yeah that's like that's something that obviously we think about when we're playing and when we're sort of crafting systems but it's like uh just kind of curious to like explicitly ask about that because uh, different people navigate that differently you know um, yeah yeah it's one of the things that like when i first moved from like prior to doing like drums and electronics and things like that i had a lot of things with either guitar or, or um, pedal boards or things like this where it was very easy to get processes started, um, which comes with like the unfortunate side effect that sometimes it's easier to start a process than that process is aesthetically worth. Uh -huh. So like you could particularly like with something like looping or repeating or anything like that, you can sort of like push a button and all of a sudden now you're gonna have like two minutes of this loop going and you, you sort of zone it out, which I think is a, a trap of, of that kind of thing. And then when I moved to sort of like a more drum based thing, I felt very naked and that I had, at the time anyways, few processes that could do that. So like, I felt like I was like, oh my God, I, like it's gonna go, I did the thing and then like it stopped and what, what do I do now? So like I had to confront that in a very like almost violent manner. Like I, I had no way around that. And then, you know, I kind of negotiated that in space and silence and, you know, I'm, I'm better for it on the other side, but I remember that being like a very striking thing of particularly how easy it is to start something versus whether that thing should actually still be going yeah, on <laughs> totally i mean there are also some things that i that are this sort of background surfing that's happening but i start it and then i know that that activity will actually only last between 12 and 20 seconds so it's sort of like i want i'm, I'm doing this thing and also i want to start this other process but i know that it will at some point decay away and i will need to either reactivate it or you know have that be a a moment that you know a, a gesture that has ended Mm. Um, and then there are other things that I have to explicitly turn off, right? So it's sort of 
managing all of those and keeping track of what's playing when that's sort of the the, the background or the, the the space that we're in while also managing yeah. active moment to moment conversation how much of that or or is all of that something you manage just um conceptually or do you have something in your interface in terms of like obviously you've got your screen but it, it doesn't seem like you watch the screen very much like is there much in your interface that communicates the state of things to you no and not at all in fact so i'm it's all by ear yeah it's all knowing the instrument knowing what you know listening to what's going on and being able to identify oh that's that sound that Mm. i had started and now it's either you know it should be going away soon or that's that sound that i have still running and i should either change it or turn it off or whatever um it's all just done by ear and keeping track of that sonically but also remembering what i've yeah started or what what i what processes i have running sounding at any given time and is that something you have to like mode switch in terms of like your physical performance as in like you're you're in there doing stuff do you have to then like stop to do like do another type of behavior to manage the other thing and then come back or yeah that's a good that's a good um that's a good observation i mean yeah it, it sometimes it is really you know i'm i'm here you know i'm doing this sound right now that's this and then i have to feel like oh i want to you know, get, yeah. get that one. Um, and it doesn't feel like mode switching. It's not like it's taking me out of the moment. It's keeping me sort of in the moment in, in multiple time frames, like in multiple sonic spaces. But there certainly is a sense of, uh, you know, I need to, you know, draw my attention away from this for a moment to yeah, you know, yeah. do that thing. There's yeah. definitely a certain type of swishing that's going on. Yeah, there. and in this case, I mean, I guess you have it on a different controller, which would yeah. maybe minimize that. So yeah. you don't have to like tab on like your right. Inter- yeah, right. So none. Yeah. So I'm not doing any sort of tabbing. The the sounds that I have are all accessible, controllable from right here. Yeah. Um, because I actually try to completely avoid the keyboard interface or even looking at the screen at mm. all while I'm playing. Um, it's all done sonically and knowing what the instrument is yeah yeah um um, um i when i'm i mean depending on the amount of controllers i have i i, I prefer that kind of paradigm in terms yeah. of like there's a lot of information that you can get from a screen but it, um in performance it can take a bit a, an amount of time to parse it yeah totally. unless it's like super huge like colorful you know yeah. but they tend to not be so it's like you have to look yeah. and like yeah. oh, okay and by then like yeah the moment can yeah. very much be gone totally. and the same thing with like tabbing or, or paging or things like that like to I've been quite thinking. I've been thinking about that a lot lately because I've been playing. I don't know if we've talked about this, but I've been playing a lot of StarCraft Two, which is a very multitask, um, action-heavy game where you sort of negotiate multiple processes at oh, once, yeah. and and your ability to do it is um, is predicated on your ability to do that thing. So I, I kind of wonder, particularly because you've got a pretty complex and robust setup there. Like, I, imagining a version that's like super uh, information dense, where you can be like kind of juggling a thousand yeah. things and um but what that would mean in terms of interface you know is is a a different matter yeah instead of looking at the screen i'm really just i'm really just listening so for me all the sounds that i'm making because i know the instrument so it's like i know that this you know it's i'm like looking at the visual screen or the sonic screen of like what what uh, you know what's happening um sort of always keeping track of that Hmm. it's just similar sort of idea of sort of checking what's keeping track of things but sonically rather than Visually. Do you find that, I mean, this is kind of getting quite tangential down that path, but do you find that limits some of the kind of sonic languages that you can use? So, for example, if you have like short bursty sounds, it's very easy to be in the moment with that sound because you're, you're, you push this button and it makes that sound and it's over and then it's like a very um, tickly interface mm-hmm. um, versus if there's some sort of like longer process happening. But these, like, do you have any longer process that you can start that sounds very tickly? You know, I mean, obviously, like you can do anything in it, but like, do you l- limit it that way? So, like, the more gestural language is what you're doing now, and processes you start tend to be more um, flowing yeah. and long. Um, there are some processes that I can start that are more tickly, a little more surprising. So mm-hmm. they sort of have an agency of their own that they will surprise me in various ways, and I'll. And that can be really interesting because then I'm responding to that voice as well as to the other voices in the room. Mm. Um, and there are some, but not as many. It, it's true that the tickliness, I really, li- <laughs> I really like this, this word, the sort of very active activations um, are 
things that I, I like to control myself. I find mm. them really expressive and gestural. So it's, I want to be able to be responding in the moment with them. And so having another agent in the software also doing that, I think, dilutes the clarity of the communication that I'm expressing with my collaborator, and yeah. potentially with an audience as well, but with my collaborator, so that you know, if, if the collaborator does something, I want to be able to respond with intentionality that these sounds are in conversation. Yeah. And if I, there's an agent in the software that is sort of making those sounds maybe on their own, yeah. the response might not be as coordinated in a way mm. that I'd want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I was also mainly thinking as well as like, it would make it also harder um, for you to determine the layers of stuff by ear as well. Mm -hmm. Because if the, I mean, obviously, you can know when you push with something, you hear yeah. a thing, but yeah. if the language starts getting blurry, that makes it harder to purely keep track of all this yeah. stuff just sonically. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's true. And when I do use those other agents that are more active, that I'm not explicitly controlling, um, there is often a sense of, like I said, surprise, which can be interesting, but also it is a sense of like, oh, like that thing is doing that thing. Um, and it is a little dis disorienting for me hmm. so when, when that happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, I, I went on like multiple tangents, but like, yeah, you have an nice. interesting and complex system. So I just kind of had some uh, more curiosity based yeah. questions and just kind of trying to. Cool. Shall we play a bit more? Let's do it. Yeah. The in-between bits as a performer always, particularly as a percussion, is so loud. I mean, like, unintentionally, like, obviously, if I start playing, I can play a quiet sound, but, like, my, I'm not thinking right now is, like, you know, it's like you just put the end that's often quite loud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 